In this question, we are asked to find the area of a finite region R enclosed by the curve with the equation R is equal to 1 plus sine theta that lies entirely within the curve with the equation R is equal to 3 sine theta. Okay, this is our fourth one looking at the area, and by the looks of it, this is going to be a lot of work. So if you've not seen those, please take a step back and look at them, because I'm going to assume you've understood everything we've done so far. Okay, let's first sketch these up. Now, we've in one of our videos, we looked at sketching polar equations, and we looked at 3 sine theta. 3 sine theta is going to be a circle, okay, and it's going to look something like so, that that kind of looks like a circle. And this point right here, we're going to have the point here, which is going to be 3. Okay, so this is going to have now a, a point out here, and we're going to have the point at here at 3 over 2, and then this one right here at 3. So let's write that like so. So this point is going to be 3 over 2. We won't need this in our working, and this point now is going to be 3. And this is, these are just reference points for us. If we now consider this one right here, 1 plus sine theta, if you take values of theta and then you look at 1 plus sine theta, we will realise that this is going to be another uh, curve that's going to be symmetric about the y-axis. So take theta to be equal to naught. The sine of theta is naught, so we end up with 1. Take theta to be pi by 2. The sine of pi by 2 is 1. 1 plus 1 is going to be, give us 2. Pi the sine of pi is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. 3 pi by 2, the sine of 3 pi by 2 is going to be minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. Therefore, we can plot these points. This is the half line where theta is equal to 0. And when theta is equal to 0, our curve is going to be equal to 1, and we'll put that there. When theta is pi by 2, our curve is going to be 2, which is going to be just here. When theta is pi, we're going to be here at 1, and then we're going to be at 0. So just sketching this, and it really will be a rough sketch, we're going to end up with a shape like so. And this, again, as with the circle, is symmetric about the y-axis. And we end up with something looking like that. So these are symmetric. My next move is to find the area. I've been asked to find the area that's enclosed by both. And how I'm going to concentrate on this is to look now at this whole area right here now and we are interested in all of this and then of course exactly the same the other side so what I've got this side I'm going to have this side the way in which I can do this let's just get rid of that for now is to find the point of intersection now the point of intersection is going to be where these two meet so if we put that place on just here the point at which those two meet is when r is equal to r. So what we're going to have then is 1 plus sine theta is going to be equal to 3 sine theta. 2 sine theta will be equal to 1. Sine theta will be equal to 1 half. So sine theta is equal to 1 half, which means theta, sine, of, uh, sine theta equals a half. What we're going to have is, what's that, pi by 6. So this point right here is going to be pi by 6. This is a half line theta equals 0. This is the half line theta equals pi by 6. And this is the half line theta is equal to pi by 2. What I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to find the integral from 0 to pi by 6 for the circle. That is going to give me this sliver right here. Then I'm going to add to it the integral from pi by 6 to pi by 2 of the curve r is equal to 1 plus sine theta. I'm then going to rely on these being symmetric and then double my answer. So let's just clarify. What we're looking for now is the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half r squared d theta. This is the general formula given to find the area trapped between or trapped by a polar curve. So if I think about this now, I don't have to do half because I'm going to be doing the same the other side. So let's just consider what I'm going to do here. Instead of doing half, I'm going to do one lot of the integral from 0 to pi by 6. Okay, from 0 to pi by 6 of r squared when r squared is 3 sine theta all squared. So we're going to get 9 sine squared theta d theta. 
what I've just done is r squared. r squared is going to be 9 sine squared theta. And I'm just interested in this sliver right here. Usually we would do half. I'm doing two because I'm going to double my answer up. And you might want to just write a note in the exam to tell them that's what you're doing. So bringing the constant the other side, we've got nine. We're going from zero to pi by six. And we're integrating sine squared theta d theta. I'm going to use a trig identity. Cos two theta is going to be equal to one minus two sine squared theta. So we can say sine squared theta is going to be one half one minus cos two theta. And that's a trig identity you should know and be able to use. So I'm going to substitute this into here. Again, writing a constant, the other side of the integral sign, we've got nine over two, the integral from zero to pi by six of one minus cos two theta d theta. So let's now take that. So what we're going to have then is 9 over 2. And we're going to have from 0 to pi by 6. And that's going to give me theta minus 1 over 2 sine 2 theta. And all we have to do is evaluate this. So let's do that then. What we're going to get now is the following. We'll have 9 over 2 starting with pi by 6. What we're going to have then is pi by 6 and consider this part right now the sine of 2 pi well pi by 6 if we do two lots out, that's going to be sine of pi by uh, sine of pi by 3 so we're going to get minus 1 half sine of pi by 3 is going to give us root 3 over 2 okay so all I've done is put that in root 3 over 2 job done and then of course we're going to get 0 and then we're going to get plus 0 evaluating 0 3 feet and 2 feet will just give us 0 we can, of course, tidy this up if we wish. And what have we got here? We've got now, uh, that's going to give me, uh, what have we got? 3 pi by 4. Let's just clean this bit up. 3 pi by 4 here. And then we're going to have now, what's that going to give me? Minus 9 pi by 8. So minus, ni sorry, minus 9 root 3 by 8. And that's unit squared, OK? So this is unit squared. And this is the area now trapped between and I'll I'll draw this on now that we've uh, we've done that bit this is this sliver here okay that's that sliver here and it's going to be the same sliver the other side by symmetry we've got exactly the same just here and whilst my curves are not symmetric hopefully you can appreciate that what we're now interested in is finding the rest of this area and the rest of this area is going to be two lots of the integral from pi by 6 this point right here to pi by 2 of the following r is equal to 1 plus sine theta so what we're going to have then the usual integral is given to be 1 half the integral and we would generally go in this one from pi by 6 to pi by 2 and what we're going to have is 1 plus sine theta squared d theta but remember, I need two lots of this. By simply doing it from here to here, it's going to give me one lot. So what I'm looking for is two lots of this. So what I'm interested in is the integral from pi by 6 to pi by 2. And what we'll do now is expand this out. 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta d theta. We've already used the, the trig substitution here, this trig identity, and I can use this again. We've seen now that sine squared 2 theta can be written, let's write it here, sine squared uh, theta uh, can be written as 1 half the quantity 1 minus cos 2 theta. Just remember that one, that's the one we used up here, okay? So we're going to sub this in right here. So what I've now got then is the integral from pi by 6 to pi by 2, and we've got now, I've got 1 plus a half, which is going to give me 3 over 2. I've got plus 2 sine theta. And then I've got minus 1 half cos 2 theta. Hopefully that's made sense. If it hasn't, just hit pause and have another run through. All I've done is combine these up. So what we're interested in now is the following. We're going from pi by 6 to pi by 2. I don't need two of them. I've already done this. So we've got 3 over 2 theta, integrating 3 over 2 with respect to theta, 
integrating two sine theta will give us minus two cos theta. And integrating minus one half cos two theta will give us minus one over four sine two theta. Okay, and we're interested in this between pi by two or pi by six and pi by two. So let's now evaluate then three um, lot three over two lots of pi by two is going to give us three pi by four. Okay, then we're going to sub in cos of pi by two is going to give me naught, and then sine of pi is going to end up giving me naught as well. Subtracting away from that now, if I sub in pi by six, that's going to give me three pi. By 12 okay 3 by by 12 is going to give me uh, pi by 4 isn't it so sub in that in right here and you will want to show your full workings in the exam 3 pi by 12 is pi by 4 minus 2 cos of pi by 6 cos of pi by 6 is root 3 over 2 so this is going to give me minus root 3 2 lots of root 3 over 2 is going to just give me root 3 so that's that one done Again, show this in your workings. Uh, sine of 2 lots of pi by 6 is the sine of pi by 3. So sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. So we're going to end up now with minus uh, root 3 over 2, which is going to give me root 3 over 8. Right, take your time with those. Um, I would show for my full workings in an exam, but as we're kind of low on space and time, I'm kind of winging it a bit. 3 pi by 4 minus pi by 4 is 2 pi by 4, or pi by 2. Now, I've got here minus, minus, and minus. So this is going to become a positive. And if I switch these up into eighths, what I'm going to end up having is, what's that going to give me? 8 pi. That's going to give me 8 of those, plus 1 of those. It's going to be 9 root 3 by 8. That looks good. Okay. Okay. So, this again is unit squared, and this is the area that I found in this part right here, and then this part right here. So, everything that I've just found, this whole area, is the black bit and the blue bit. We simply need to add these two together now. So, I've got 3 pi by 4 here, minus 9 root 3 by 8. So, I've got 3 pi by 4 minus 9 root 3 by 8. Oh, and that, that kind of makes my life a little easier because these two are going to cancel out. So all I'm left with now is the following. I've got 3 pi by 4 plus pi by 2. So if I write that now as 2 pi by 4 plus, so switching that up into 4s, plus 3 pi by 4, what do we wind up with? 5 pi by 4, and that's going to be units squared. And that is our final answer. Um, that's nice that those are cancelled out. So we've ended up after all that work, and that's one of the many ways you can do that problem. I'm not suggesting you must do it that way, and I'm, I am suggesting that you show um, all your workings in the exam. But essentially, that's where we wind up. Final area that's trapped um, between the two, as it were, is going to be, what did we make it? 5 pi by 4 units squared. So if that's made no sense, please do check the videos before. This is uh, quite a hard case, but something that you should be cool with.